Hi my friend, we are playing another game in our road to 2500, this is a Scandinavian and I don't know how to play against the Scandinavian, to be honest, this is my status right now, I don't know how to play it, I just play random moves. So, uh, I know that if I go greedy and grab that pawn, it's usually bad for me, so I just don't grab it. And I'm okay to go to end game because I prefer to play in end game actually. So no. Let's castle opposite. And let's don't let his knight to come in. Ah, I had a good move. Knight c5. Why I played? Oh, right now again I have a knight c5. It's with tempo, right? Either he gives me a bishop pair or it's a tempo. He should retreat the bishop. We both play like a billis game. Okay. It's a tempo and this knight is uh, there and enjoys to be there. And I can, right now, push this pawn as well. I want to open up the king side of my opponent. When you cancel opposite side, you just open the game. Yeah, it was selling at the start that I don't know how to play against the Scandinavian. And this is why I'm playing without queen. After I exchange queens easily in a Scandinavian I didn't take the knight because he doesn't have a space to move the pieces so I shouldn't help him to create a space if I give and take him uh, his knight he will be happy because uh, when you don't have a space you just uh, should exchange pieces to gain some space when less pieces on the board you have more space to move so his uh, rook and bishop are in their initial position that tempo was useful. Now I'm thinking about just pushing forward. Yes, why not? Pushing forward. Should be also careful a little bit. Retreat this bishop back. I don't want to give it for, give a piece here. I should be careful or very careful. Don't know. One of these things. We don't want to lose a piece. So. If I take it, it's okay. I take it. I don't need to take it. I can just attack. I can just go forward and attack. I can go to e4, no, sorry, e5. Uh, I always make mistake and mix up these numbers. I can go to e5. I can take the knight. I uh, Okay, e5 has a drawback. The drawback of e5 is that he can push to my uh, knight. And my knight doesn't have many places. The only place it can go is in g6. It's not bad. Okay. I can play in f6. Kicks my knight away. I can play knight g6. And it's not bad at all. Yeah, going in is better. Still, we try to not give him any space. Of course, he can go crazy. He has the ideas of like playing knight d3 in uh, at some point to fork my rook. For example, maybe he takes my g pawn. After I take, he forks my rook, for example, with knight. It's not a bad deal for him. It's not a good deal. Yeah, he did it. He did it. And uh, this was expected. He gave up exchange because... He really, he win an exchange, but he gives two pieces, gives up two pieces. 
but he really had a very clumsy position. Everything was. Uh, do I take with the rook? Okay, I don't pre-move it. Do I take with the rook or do I keep the rook? I think I will take the, uh, and I'm okay with exchanging all pieces and I'm piece up, but exchange down. So it's a important game right now. It's a more difficult one. So let's go up. And here, what to do next? I think I can actually defend my knight with a bishop and activate my bishop. Or defend my knight with a pawn. Maybe with a pawn is better because this pawn blocks all his pawns. No, my pawn structure is okay. They are already blocking his pawns, so let's defend it with the bishop and then play h5. If he takes, I take, and uh, this is a game with the tempo. His bishop is a long time that his bishop is locking my knight and attacking my knight. I don't know what to do against that bishop. Or should I do anything against it, actually? This is the problem. So I'm down upon. What is the plan right now? I'm down upon and exchange, but I'm up a piece. So where does he want to come? He wants to come to... He wants to come in. No, but I can just kick the bishop away and prevent him from coming in. Yes, let's kick the bishop away. I'm happy if he gives up a bishop because I have a bishop pair against a rook. That's awesome, actually. Now again, I can attack that bishop. And it's not just attacking the bishop. If I play knight somewhere... I'm attacking the pawn on a5 and the bishop. He should defend the pawn. Cannot ignore it. Then it's good. Then it's good. Let's do it. Now again, I'm thinking about attacking the bishop once more. And once he defends it, uh, once more with the pawn, actually. Once he goes back, Once it goes back, maybe I'm not in a best position. Well, I was thinking once it goes back, I play pawn c4, c5. He goes to c7, the only square that is valid for him everywhere else is bad. Then I play knight. And I play knight d, uh, d6. Attacking his d pawn. And he pushes the d pawn. Defense is uh, territory. Okay, it's not good. But anyway, I can push that pawn. But the thing is that I don't feel that pushing the pawn is good. So I may just block his... I just block his rook from coming in for now. Or another idea is to kick his bishop back. And then reposition my other bishop. Oh, what a hard game. Chess is a hard game. Difficult game. Hmm. So let me kick this bishop. Put this pawn here, defending my bishop. And I don't know what to do. His bishop is doing very bad. 
but my black white black escort bishop also is doing not that great is uh, attacking the a pawn yeah that's good but on the other hand defending the f pawn so he has this option of pushing the rook forward but what if I just attack this rook with the king? How can he defend it? Can he? Of course, he cannot take my knight. I will mm, grab it. I grab the rook and that's the end of the day. But if I attack the rook with the king, the problem for me is that if I attack the rook with the king, then, then there is nothing bad. Just attack it. He cannot defend it with the bishop. Just further attack it. And put the king in the light squares. Oh, my blunder, I blundered. Does he see that? He didn't. He didn't see. He could push pawn to my knight. And then... Wow. Wow. What a blunder I did and he didn't see it. So... Should move my bishop away. What a blunder. <laughs> Oh, I didn't, I don't have much time to sing actually. So, let's go backward. That's awkward, I know, but uh, he wants to play rook f, uh, f1 and I don't want to let him to do the, to do. So, what to do? I have no idea what to do. I'm off a base, but I don't know what to do. And so I don't feel I have enough time to think much. So I'm thinking about rerouting my knight. Yes, rerouting my knight. Blocking his bishop pass. Yes, I am giving up uh, the knight for that bishop. But the point is that his king cannot come in. Ah. And he cannot take that pawn. Uh, the, or, or he can take, but it's not good for him. It's not healthy. Or I feel so. I should somehow blitz it out from now. Oh, he takes. Is it healthy for him? Don't think so. It's just dangerous. I am, I, I'm not that brave. I mean, this is just a check. And we win a piece, next piece, and the game ends in a with a piece. So I should defend this uh, bishop. And now I'm thinking about, yeah, I'm thinking about attacking to his weak g pawn. I mean, this way. Is it good to attack that pawn? Let me attack it and see what he is doing. If he attacks my knight, then I may change my attitude. So, I will take that pawn. It's okay. I will take the next pawn as well. No, there should be mate in the corner.
Okay, but I know that I'm pinning my own knight, but that's fine. Since I have a plan for him. I intentionally did that to letting him pin my knight. To win that pawn. And then if he push the pawn, I say check and win the other pawn. We have enough time to finish this game in a good shape. Let me attack this rook. Getting in with the king. Don't want to let him any counter play. So just blocking. Pushing the pawn, queening the pawn. He should be resigning right now. But some people don't want to. So we should mate him. Without making queen. To punish him. So. Next move is not a queen, but I play knight. I play knight in with this check. Okay, he finally resigned, but it was very late. Let's go back and see the game. Yeah, as you, I'd say that a sword. I'm confident with my middle game and end game compared to similar rating opponents. I mean. Also, he was a new user and his rating is not uh, really 2500 and we were lucky. We got some points. Yeah, I'm a little bit confident with my middle game and end game skills compared to similar rating uh, opponents, but of course not compared to like GM or something like that. And uh, I'm very bad at opening and at the opening I think I did not play very good. I uh, let him to equalize. Let's go to opening. And here is better for me. Engine really don't like a Scandinavian, <laughs> uh, but it's engine. And I let him, you know, at this position, my experience says that taking is very bad. Takes, takes and then. Uh, Knight comes in and usually I don't know what to do. I cannot defend the uh, e-pawn. So, and uh, amazing that engine says take, okay? And it is plus uh, 0 plus 6, uh, 0 0.6, right? Oh, I should take with the knight. I don't take with the king. And then coming here is not helpful because we defend with the pawn. Okay, I learned something. But anyways... I exchanged everything and let him to equalize. Uh, here is almost equalized. It's 0 0.5. It still is good for white. But I had a, I always had a feeling that I am doing much better. And here, uh, Lich says that Lich learn from your mistakes. At this position, I moved back. BD was when find a better move. Uh, does it mean this move? I mean, I thought a little bit, but it was very dangerous. Or another move I considered was rook there, but it's not so active. So what's the move? What's the killer move here? Killer move. Bishop forward? No. Really? I thought about it, but then plays knight, uh, pawn, push uh, the pawn towards my bishop and... I say that this is not good. I cannot kick this pawn. I thought about this, but <laughs> then immediately I rejected and I didn't even say that I thought about it. Here I played knight e4. I saw that it's not bad, but I guess engine likes to something like exchanging the knights. I, I know, but uh, in the game as a human player, I thought that if he goes... If you remember, I said that he may take my G pawn and go for sacrificing two pieces to win exchange. And he did that. And I was expecting this. And I don't think it was any bad for me. 
here I blundered in the game I say that I blundered playing king now uh, let me okay it doesn't let me show you what's the blunder but you solve it for your own uh, I'd say uh, something like similar simple move like mm, bishop there should be okay first uh, you shouldn't put your pawn pieces under attack all the time just because it is defended backwardly with another piece he could simply push the pawn uh, a move before actually uh, after i played king c4 a uh, different move order and then it was a piece but he didn't see it at this position yes i played knight there i was a little bit nervous because i blundered the move before maybe knight here was better maybe but not sure what what should i do he wants to play f1 uh rook f1 and attack my pawn so i should prevent that oh beautiful beautiful move he cannot take with the bishop because if he takes i take then if he take with the rook then this is end of a day it was a beautiful move what else oh we had four mistakes and all of them covered and just want to see analyzing this game of oh, what is what is the analysis mode okay here is the end here was plus a lot i mean always two pieces are better than rook especially if you have a bishop pair bishops are killers and i think you notice that at the very end how oh, strong were these bishops the engines uh, puts question mark for everything but it is plus eight i mean agent uh, differentiates between plus eight and plus uh, seven so he pushes i attack that uh, rook and the pawn maybe it was better to just grab this i'm not sure about this anyways i defend and take this pawn check and win and yeah i mean you have two bishops they control long diagonals it was a bad decision for him to exchange it i hope you enjoyed and yes in the scandi or scandinavian or french i don't know how to play against them i simply go to end game or middle game i just ignore openings uh opening um, ideas and just play uh, give back every um, advantage why it has as a first move i don't need that advantage uh, because uh, otherwise i should know how to play that opening so you can also use this tactic and rely on end game and mid game strategies instead of memorizing opening line i hope you enjoyed see you next time bye